Welcome, everybody. Thanks for joining us here on the Amateur Sports TV. This is the Pile of Mount Hockey Academy show. I know it's the summer. I know we don't think much about hockey, but we're finally starting to see return to play and all of those guidelines and those uh, instructions from the upper bodies telling players, especially hockey and all the sports that are gearing up for the fall, what they can and cannot do. The bottom line is we're starting to see development camps, rosters being filled, and those groupings and those players getting their proper assignments so that we can see something perhaps return as early as late September, October. Today joining me on the Pilot Mount Hockey Academy show was a player from last year, the infamous 10-11-12 line, Keelan Holland, who joins us from the paw. He's going to sit down and chat with us how early and how great chemistry was for that team, building up to their championship that they were able to complete before the COVID-19 pandemic struck. And what he's been up to over the last four or five extended summer months to make sure that he's tip shop tape ready to go for the MJ and the Blues program. Please welcome Keelan Holland on the Pilot Mount Hockey Academy show. Keelan joining me here from the Paul Manitoba. Good afternoon, Keelan. How are we doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? Fabulous. I understand we're catching you in between workout sessions, which is we'll get to later on in the show because you have to be ready for camp probably in a month and a half time, perhaps. Uh, but let's talk a quick couple minutes about last year, making the move to the Buffalo program. What were your first intentions last year? Why did you make the switch? And how was that change for you early on uh, in last season? Uh, I was looking for a bit of change of scenery. Obviously, jumping from the city to Pila Mound was a pretty big jump for me, but small town feels like home for me. So, Did you feel more comfortable in that setting and more of like a person as opposed to a number? Yeah, for sure, yeah. So your first steps in Pila Mound, what did, you, what did you first understand about the city, the town, and how big that ice complex was for such a small city? I thought it was pretty impressive having a rink like that in such a small town. And the school, how was the school matching up with the uh, the schedule for you from a day-to-day -day operation for you as a player? Uh, it, it was good. I was used to it, obviously, being in a rink last year. It was basically the exact same schedule. So it's almost like just a basically a different scenery for you is what you're saying? Yeah. Perfect. So number 11 in the middle, not really, you, you were playing the middle, you were playing the wing, but that 10, 11, 12 line that was set up by Coach Rick at the beginning of the year, you guys were fast. You guys were three spark plugs that just love to buzz around the ice. Nobody could catch you. You got under the skin of a lot of players on the opposite team. I loved watching you guys play. What was it about the three of you that made it work so well on the ice? I think it's because all three of us were so aggressive and we all have a similar a similar play style that made us bond so good together on the ice. And this is the first time you've played with any of those other two players, correct? Like you didn't know each other from beforehand. You kind of were just thrown on the ice and said, okay, here we go. Yeah, pretty much. It's pretty impressive how that happens. I mean, where did you get your hockey IQ from? Like where did, is it from your dad's side, from your mom's side, older brothers? I have no idea. I think more of my brother because he's a smart player. At 5'4", you have to be smart. You, you yeah. can't get caught, right, Keelan? Yeah, you have to be slippery. It's slippery. Slippery is a good word. We'll use that adjective very well. Throughout the season, a lot of bang-ups, a lot of injuries going on throughout the team. You yourself stayed fairly healthy through the course of the year. How important was it to have all legs ready to go that first week of March heading to BC for that championship week as the number one seed? It was very important for us. Obviously, going in, we knew we were the top team and everybody was out to get us. So we knew what to expect and what we were heading into. Would you rather have the target on your back or would you rather be shooting at the target? I'd rather have the target on my back. Okay. What is it about being that number one seed that made you feel or give you that extra confidence going into that week? Just knowing that we knew how to beat them and what our competition was, it was a better feeling than heading into something you're, you don't expect or know what you're going up against. 
Absolutely, absolutely. The, uh, that first game, probably not your best game. Bust legs. I've heard all the excuses from all your other teammates. Tell me what happened in that first game and why it was probably best to kind of get knocked down and then realize you got to claw your way back up to the final. I think it was just nerves for all of us, obviously being our first playoff game. And knowing we were the top team, everybody got a little nervous going into it. Absolutely. You guys are a very young team. I know I've talked to many of you over the course of the year and Coach Rick as well. The opportunity for all of you but one to return next year was pretty impressive. Now, obviously, we've got an, a great announcement to make later on, but you guys were such a young team with not – uh you have but you played all like veterans like you knew that you had a place to be keelan how was that like how were you able to perform like that and know that you weren't like rookies on that even though you were mostly rookies i think it's because everybody knew what they were there to do we all had our own special aspects to our game what part of your game do you like most playing keelan is it the slippery part is it the edgy part is it the drive to the net part is the Catching that six foot two guy off his back corner so you can pummel him to the ice. What is it about your game you love most playing? I think I like being slippery. I mean, obviously, taking down a six foot two guy is pretty fun too, but it's probably better to be slippery my size. No doubt. The final, let's talk about that final game you as a group played. Uh, the second time around, you faced uh, the team is from, is it Edge that you guys played twice? Yeah. That second time around, so you knew what you were in store for. Larger goalie, battle tested, but that third period was almost like overtime from the beginning to the end. Yeah, that was a pretty tough game. Obviously, losing Kobe in the first period, I think it was that that hit us pretty hard. But we knew what we had to do, and we got it done. Yeah, you lost Kobe in the first. You lost Tyne in halfway through the game as well because he was unable to return to the ice. Do you remember where you were when that final buzzer hit, two to one, and where your stick ended up, where your helmet ended up, and who you hugged first? I don't even know who I hugged first. I just jumped into the entire team. <laughs> Total jubilation. I mean, that has got to be the the ultimate crescendo, the apex of a great season uh, for players like yourself that have made that journey to Pilot Mound and be able to accomplish something like this. How did you as a teammate feel and how did you guys feel as a team knowing that you were at the top of your game when it mattered most? Obviously, we were very proud of ourselves, proud of everybody. Um, we all worked our hardest and, you know, we did what we had to do and we came out on top. We've seen so many championships, playoffs, conference championships, finals canceled in the end of March and April. What did it mean to the Pilot Mound group and the CSSHL knowing that you were able to complete this championship before everything shut down with the pandemic? Uh, we were very happy about it. We got a chance to play for what we deserved and you know, there's not much else to say. We just what do you think would happen if you had to play the following week and you weren't able to complete it? Do you think could you even imagine that? I couldn't imagine the feeling, the frustration, the sadness of not being able to finish the season, getting cut off by something like that. Obviously, it would hit us all pretty hard. Absolutely. It's been quite a different change. March 13th, 14th was when everything shut down. Keelan, were you able to get home right away after you returned from BC? Yeah, I left the following weekend to go visit my family at home and that's when you kind of kept it all down pat and ready to go yeah perfect okay we're going to talk about being home because quite frankly it's been a little bit longer of a uh how would i explain it longer of a uh a summer break because it has been kind of more like a summer break with online schooling we'll be right back with keelan hall and we'll talk about life back home on this extended summer break and what he's been up to to keep in shape for his next camp and his next level here on the Pilot Mount Hockey Academy show.
Keelan Holland from the Manitoba joins me here on the Pilot Mount Hockey Academy show. Keelan, you talked about your workouts. Is it a daily workout schedule? Were you doing mornings, evenings, morning, evenings, or how are we working that out? I got it. Uh, I do Monday mornings and evenings, Tuesday mornings and evenings, basically all week until Saturday, Sunday, and then I take a bit of a rest. Rest is important, right? Explain the reason why you need rest to the younger kids out there that think they can go all to the wall uh, seven days a week. Well, you know, if you're wearing on your body the entire week and you don't take a rest, obviously you're going to be broken down and not in the best shape you could be in. So rest is very important for letting your body rebuild itself. Absolutely. Good words. Strong words. Have you been able to get on the ice in the past couple of months? No, I have not. Being up north, the rinks are out till probably near the end of the summer. That's when the ice will go back in up here. But I'll, I think I'm going to head down south to get on the ice a little bit. So are you going to remember how to skate being off ice this long? I hope so. <laughs> I think a lot of kids are going to be tested uh, no matter what, Keelan, when it comes to returning back on the ice, whether they've been training, whether they've been conditioning, whether they remember how to properly put left foot, right foot in stride. Uh, a lot of you know young players are going to be in that same boat. So uh, what have you been doing outside of your workout regime to stay in proper condition, getting ready for camp? Uh, I try to keep my cardio up and go for runs and ride the bike as much as I can because cardio is just as important as strength. Got to have big legs, big pipes, right? Yeah. What part of your game do you think needs to – you're a slippery player, you like to play aggressive, you like to play with a little bit of oomph. What part of your game needs to be a little bit more attended to over the next year? I think my speed needs to be a little more worked on because obviously being small, you have to be pretty fast and you, there's always room to get faster, you know. Keelan, off the ice, what type of hobbies have you been doing this summer? What have you been taking your mind off of everything? Because, I mean, being up in the north, it's a little bit different. You're not around a lot of the, the media and the hoopla and whatnot, but you're able to get out in the outdoors a lot more. What have you been able to do with your friends and your family that have kept you uh, just, you know, more grounded, more common sense? Usually if it's hot out, I like to go to the lake and go for a swim. But it's been pretty hard to do that since it's been raining almost all month. So not so much the fishing and the hunting has been kind of just getting away from all the rain, perhaps. Yeah. yeah okay. Uh, you said that you're going to be coming back potentially to the south sooner than later. Uh, a big announcement you made last a couple of weeks ago with regards to making your next step with the Manitoba Junior Hockey League and the Winnipeg Blues organization. What led to that decision for you, Keelan, for the 2020-2021 season? Uh, I just thought it was a great program and it would be good for my development to jump into that league. And, you know, I kind of wanted to stay close to home for a year. What are your plans after this year? Where do you see yourself in three to four years, Keelan? Uh, I think I'd be going to university somewhere, whether it be college in the states or in canada i'm not really sure yet okay but you still want to do the education route which is awesome it's yeah a great great idea to be a student athlete i always commend those that can do athletics and academics at the same time so congratulations on that uh a little more off the ice keelan whose cooking have you enjoyed most mom or dad since you've been home probably my mom <laughs> yeah mom cooks better yeah Okay. Is dad more just a barbecue kind of guy or does he get his feet wet in the kitchen as well? He's more of a barbecue guy, but he cooks some pretty good spaghetti. There we go. Okay. So dad's got the spaghetti. It's not mom's spaghetti like Eminem would say. Uh, choice of music in the group has always been fun. I heard that Brett Tatarin was the uh, DJ this year. Was he uh, a good music man or is he need to get some uh, lessons from some uh, DJ guys? No, Brett was pretty good. He always had the good music before games. What type of music do you enjoy? Uh, I mostly listen to rap or country. Why is it that rap and country always go together? Is it because Nas and X and Billy Ray Cyrus did Old Town Road or just because the two match up so well? It's just because it's nice to get off of like rapping, like go to something like slower, more calm. 
Okay. A little more calm, a little more relaxed music, if you will. Okay. You said dad cooks a mean spaghetti. What does mom cook that's pretty awesome? She makes uh, a lot of good stuff. Tacos is one of my favorite. Burgers. Okay. You said you had some siblings as well, correct? Yeah. Older or younger? I got an older brother and an older sister. So you're the youngest of three. Yep. How was that growing up in the house, being the youngest and knowing that the trails have already been blazed, so to speak? And was it easy for you being the younger one or did you still have to get the work done? It was definitely easier being the younger one in the family, but you still had to get your work done. I'm going to say two words to you. Tell me what they mean to you now and what they'll mean to you in your future. You ready? Time management. I think time management will be really important. Obviously, growing up, you need to be good at managing your time and staying focused. Simple put. I like it. If you're not on the ice, Keelan, what are you doing? If I'm not on the ice, I'm either in the gym or, or I'm at the lake or something like that. Okay. Speaking of the gym, what's your favorite style of workout to do? I mean, what's your what body part do you enjoy most? I usually like to do my upper body because it's just where most of the strength comes with for a physical play. Absolutely. Obviously you need to have a strong core. We're playing against bigger guys, you need a strong core. No doubt. Who was your favorite player growing up? I think my favorite player would have to be Patrick Kane. Okay. Because he can dangle? Because he's a little guy? Because he's an American? What's up? He is a smaller guy. He's not the biggest in the league, but he's slippery and he has good hands. That's who I try to kind of model my game after when I'm not playing physical. Good hands are the understatement, I would say. He's got some of the best. He's got some of the sweet mitts out there for sure. Uh, we haven't talked video games. Not a big video game guy? Not really anymore. Okay. Did you get involved with the NHL 20 tournaments and stuff with the boys? No, I haven't even bought NHL 20 yet. I'll just wait no. for the new one. <laughs> I'm in the same boat as you, Keelan. I can't keep up with all these video games. These kids have way too much time, so I think. And they have too many tournaments. Um, you said the lake. Do you enjoy fishing at all? Yeah, I like to fish a lot. Awesome. There's got to be some good waters up, no, up at home, correct? Oh, yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah, for sure. Good. What's the one thing you've been able to do with your siblings uh, if you have been able to over the last four months you not normally would being at school? I'm um, obviously seeing them more. I usually just hang out with them and just sit in the living room because they don't – because my sister just had a kid, so. It's so you're an she, uncle now? Yeah. Uncle Keelan. <laughs> yep. Does that have a weird ring to it? A little bit. A little bit? Well, you're you're going to be well prepared for it. Congratulations on making your next step, Keelan, to the Blues. Um, obviously, they're going to have a new coach coming in with Coach Burnett, uh, having moved to back to Saskatchewan. Uh, just an amazing job last year with the Buffalo winning that championship. I hope you guys get to fit for ring soon. Is there, have you had any talks about uh, getting some jewelry to commemorate that wonderful weekend and season? No, but I'm hoping we get to get some rings. Obviously, it'd be nice to have one of those laying around. No doubt. Keelan, if there was one thing you had to help or help to tell uh, a future or prospect for uh, somebody who's attending Pilot Mound, what would you tell them that is the best part about that hockey academy? I think it's the people. It's a small town. Everyone's, everyone's kind, and you bond really well living in a dorm with all the boys. Right on. Well, Keelan, I want to thank you very much. Any any words you want to say to the boys since you haven't seen them for, since probably March? Uh, I miss them all. I hope to see them all soon, hopefully in Pilot Mound. Well, there Obviously. you have it, Keelan Holland. Your 10, your 10 and your 12 line mates. What would you like to say to those two guys? Like I say, I love playing with them this year, and I wouldn't have wanted to play with a different line. Short, simple, to the point. Keelan Hall, congratulations again. Thanks for taking the time and joining us here on the Pilot Mount Hockey Academy show, and have a great rest of the evening for you. 
Yep, you too. Take care. You too. This has been Theo on the Amateur Sports TV. Make sure you join Coffee with Graham Tuesdays and Thursday mornings at 1030, as well as the show Tuesdays and Thursday nights. Thanks for watching. Have a great rest of the day, and take care. Enjoy that summer.